My name is Ellen, and I'm 25 years old. I got married early at 18 to a man, two years older than me. He was my first high school love. Or at least I thought so. Yes. There was an initial attraction, even passion at first. But it all turned into a routine. My husband pampered me, took care of me, shielded me when I was pregnant, and spoiled me. A year after our wedding, our daughter was born. I didn't pursue any f further education or work after school. My husband was studying and working, although money was tight as he was just starting his career. I, being young and capricious, wanted more for myself. Apart from taking care of the child, I did almost nothing. Everything began to irritate me. The house, the family, and my husband. In total, we lived together for five years. And over that time, my feelings for him completely cooled. Though I only realized that I no longer loved him after our daughter was born. All this time, I simply let him love me. One day, I realized that my husband was not the person I wanted to spend my entire life with. I started dreaming of a wealthy prince on a white horse who would take us, me and our daughter, to distant lands where I could indulge in luxury. I envisioned myself as a rich lady. Of course, my husband wasn't an alcoholic or lazy. We were not struggling. But we weren't living extravagantly either. And I wanted more for myself and my daughter. Hence, I met this cursed prince. I connected with Edward online. He was 33 years old, and his parents had immigrated to Switzerland where he currently lived. He spoke English well and had his own international business, a network of hotels for tourists. Initially, we just exchanged messages secretly from my husband. Then we communicated via Skype. Throughout this time, I continued to play the role of a caring mother and a loving wife. Even though sex with my husband became a mundane necessity, meanwhile, I daydreamed about my prince whom I had already fallen deeply in love with. Finally, the long-awaited day arrived. Edward planned to visit America and stop by our town. I was overjoyed. The only thing that frightened me was the impending conversation with my husband as he loved me. Edward arrived a week after notifying me. I met him at the airport, and he bought me a magnificent bouquet of flowers. We then went to a hotel where he booked a business classroom. Afterwards, we explored the city and then returned to the room where everything happened between us. For the first time, it felt like I was living in a fairy tale. I spent two days with him in his room, turned off my phone, and at that moment, I thought of nothing but my happiness. After two days, Edward informed me that he had completed his business in America was going back home and was ready to take us, me and my daughter, with him, me as his fiancé. I immediately agreed knowing that a decisive moment awaited me in the conversation with my husband. When I returned home, my husband confronted me asking where I had been all this time, claiming that he had called all, all hospitals and morgues and was preparing to report to the police. But then I told him that I was leaving him because I had met and fallen in love with another man. I said I was going away with him and taking our daughter. He begged me to reconsider in that moment, he seemed so pathetic to me. I told him not to degrade himself, accept it as it is. All he needed to do was provide written consent for our daughter to travel abroad. He said that if I had made up my mind, I could leave, but he wouldn't give me our daughter. I threw a tantrum called him a failure, accused him of depriving our daughter of a bright future due to his stupid 
jealousy, and resentment. I tried to convince him that I wasn't taking his daughter away that he could visit her during vacations and come to see us. We were even willing to pay for his trip. They could communicate via Skype every day, but my husband was adamant. I went back to Edward and tearfully told him everything. My beloved rush to comfort me suggested going without our daughter for now to explore and live with him for a month, and then return to, to finalize the divorce. He assured me that we would find a way to bring our daughter with us if necessary. He was ready to give money to my husband and if he disagreed, we would find another way to do it without his consent. We could bribe whoever needed to to be bribed strip him of parental rights. If he interfered, in that case, he would never see his daughter again. I calmed down a bit and said that I still needed to go home and pack my things. Edward laughed and told me to take only my documents. As for the belongings, he assured me that he would buy everything for me upon arrival. I agreed. Let the old things, a reminder of my previous life. Stay with my husband, let him look at them and remember the woman he lost. These thoughts made me feel a pang of conscience for the first time. After all, my husband was not at fault. When I went home for the documents, I once again tried to dissuade my husband to let our daughter go with me. I said that millions of people meet and part ways. I admitted that I was treating him unfairly, even asked for forgiveness, but pleaded not to deprive our daughter of a better life due to unnecessary resentments. However, he refused to listen. He begged me to reconsider saying that it was just a momentary confusion and he was willing to forgive everything. But I was no longer concerned. I told him that when I return next time, we would continue the conversation in court. Right before leaving, Edward told me that we needed to stop by his hotel in Mexico on the way. Unexpected matters had come up, and we needed to settle some formalities. From there, we would fly to Switzerland and also take a little break. I was thrilled when we arrived at the hotel in Mexico. We were greeted and escorted to our room by the staff. They claimed they brought champagne and a light breakfast. They opened the bottle. We poured it into glasses, and we drank to a new life. After drinking the champagne, I felt unwell everything started to blur before my eyes and I lost consciousness. That's when my fairy tale ended and a real horror movie began. I woke up in a windowless room completely naked on the floor without a phone or documents. After some time, three Latino-looking guys entered and congratulated me on my arrival. I started screaming, protesting, calling for Edward's help. They informed me that they didn't know any Edward and now I belong to them. After that, they beat and assaulted me. This continued for two days where they kept me in that cell completely naked and without food. They beat me, assaulted me, injected some substance into a, a vein on my arm. I had a hard time grasping the reality of what was happening. At first, it seemed like a nightmare then that I had died and ended up in hell. But I was wrong this was just purgatory. The real hell awaited me ahead. Those guys came back, took me to a shower, forced me to clean up. They escorted me to an office where a man around 45 to 50 years old was sitting. He informed me that my life was in his hands that from that day on, I worked for him. He asked if I guessed what exactly I was working as. Later, I found out that this so-called Edward was actually a 
courier who supplied beautiful girls for prostitution from different countries. Individuals like him lured naive girls under the pretext of work, fame, or in my case, a new easy life, then sold them to a brothel when I protested that I wouldn't become a prostitute, they beat me again then sh showed me pictures of my daughter's face. They said that if I refused to work, tried to escape, or took my own life, their people in my city would find and deal with my family. They made me write several messages to my husband telling him that I found my happiness, that I would have my own children, and that neither he nor our daughter interested me anymore. I did everything as they instructed. My husband replied asking me not to call anymore and to forget that number once and for all. Meanwhile, this guy declared that if I behaved well, followed orders, and worked diligently, they would beat me less and provide better food. The next year was pure hell. I was sold like cattle in the market. The abuse, humiliation, and beatings gradually faded if I performed my task well. Clients were mostly wealthy perverts, sadists, and just plain scoundrels. There were even times when there were several at one, it hurts and disgusts me to think about it, but after a year, I finally managed to escape. Suddenly gunfire erupted in the brothel. Chaos ensued. People were screaming and running somewhere. Men in military and police uniforms stormed the building. As I later learned, they had long been hunting down criminals involved in illegal prostitution. They began capturing and arresting clients in management while kidnapped girls were taken for questioning then to the appropriate embassy helping them return home. I returned to the USA, and it felt like a breath of fresh air. I thought my nightmare was over, but it wasn't quite so. Before finding my husband and daughter, I went through a full rehabilitation course overcoming addiction. Doctors and psychologists worked with me, and I even learned to be a hairdresser. The address where I used to live with my family now belongs to other people. It turned out my husband had declared me missing, filed for divorce, sold the apartment and bought a bigger one in a more prestigious area. He had legal custody of our daughter. About three months after my return, I tracked down my husband. I'll never forget that meeting. He didn't even greet me or inquire. He just asked what I wanted. We scheduled a meeting and spent three hours in a cafe. I told him everything without holding back, but in his eyes, I saw no hint of sympathy or pity, only coldness and contempt. My husband said that he and our daughter didn't want to see me or know me and that I should go back to the lover. I wanted to spend my life with I said I wanted to see my daughter and by law, I had the right to do so. He smirked and told me to take it to court. He pulled a recorder from his jacket pocket and placed it in front of me. It turned out he had recorded our entire on his phone where I poured my heart out hoping for forgiveness, understanding, and sympathy. He said he would use this recording against me if I tried to take our daughter back. I had never seen my husband like this. He had always been soft, willing to forgive anything. But now I saw a completely different person, cruel, cold, not hiding his contempt and hatred for me despite once loving me. Of course, on some level, I understood him. I had betrayed him, but I believe I paid the price for it. My husband told me not to appear in his life anymore or else all relatives, friends, and even our daughter would learn everything. He told her daughter that I was sick and had died that I was a loving wife and caring mother. It's better for her to remember me that way, he said. 
Better to think of her mother as dead than one who betrayed her family, ran away with a lover and became a prostitute. Then I don't know what to do. I often reminisce about all the good moments with my family and my husband, how he was kind to me how he cared for me. But I didn't appreciate it, and I, I asked myself, is it worth fighting? I really want to see my daughter. I miss her a lot and I miss my husband too. I don't blame him and I don't hope that he will ever forgive me. But I am left all alone. What should I do now?